Hi there, and welcome into EOM Presents. This is Thomas Manning, Senior Interviewer for Elements of Madness. And today we're speaking with filmmaker Tara Pernia about her feature film directorial debut, Switch Up. Uh, this is a rom-com that had its premiere at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Tara has a background in documentary filmmaking and producing and financing various film projects. Uh, this was her first time as a director of a narrative feature and uh, working with a great cast here, including uh, Christian De La Fuente and uh, Juliette Restrepo. And uh, this film is produced by Elizabeth Avellon, uh, who has been incredible in the industry for 30 plus years. And um, so I just really appreciate this conversation with Tara and hearing her talk about how um, this film and its uh, Texas setting and its premiere at South by Southwest in Austin meant a lot to her as a uh, Texan herself. So uh, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I hope you enjoy the conversation once again as we speak with Tara Pernia about Switch Up. Uh, well, I actually start out talking about uh, the Texas angle, uh, which we were just talking about a moment ago, and you're local to Austin. Um, this film is set in the state of Texas and uh, premiered at South by Southwest. So what does that mean to you as a filmmaker to represent a place that I imagine has been pretty formative in your life on uh, many levels, creatively and personally? Well, you know, let's talk about bringing it home. Um, originally, the film, when I first wrote it, was set in Miami only because, you know, from a producing point of view, we were looking at incentives and everything you know, behind the story. And my lead actor is from, well, he's originally from Chile, but at that time was living in Miami. So we thought, wow, this would just be great. It'd be easy. And it wasn't until one of my other producers came on board, Marcella Roquillo, who is from Brownsville, um, lives in South Padre and said, let's bring the film down here. And when she said that she could make certain things happen, we thought, yes, it's absolutely organic. We rewrote the, wrote you know, two thirds of the script, but the other half in Brownsville. And I think it was one of the best things we ever did because as a Texan and a filmmaker, I want to bring more stuff here. I want people to see the beauty of our state because, well, we have snow now too, <laughs> but other than heavy snow, if we don't want that kind of Iceland look, we have everything. We have a great beach, we have cities, we have it all. Um, so I would love to always keep putting the spotlight on Texas and how great filmmaking is here. And uh, with a story in the film, I uh, wanted to ask about your approach to examining the social issue of homelessness um, mm -hmm. and working to do so respectfully and without leaning into stereotypes. So for you as a director, what were some of the most significant decisions you made uh, in finding that balance in the story? So with a lot of the films that I do, I don't want to put a social message out there and kind of you know, push it on people. I wanted to be very organic and flow in and out of the story. Having said that, homelessness to me has always been an issue and a charity. I've always supported to try to bring help to those people on the street. And my main angle on it was, you know, when you see someone on the street or you see someone with, without a home, don't think it's a stereotype. Don't think they're there because they don't want to work or oh my gosh, they may be addicted to something and therefore they don't have a home. You know, maybe stop, ask the person, sit down, speak to them because a lot of the times you will find out the reasons for them not having a home is a lot deeper than any of us may think. Um, I've seen teenagers on in downtown Los Angeles that left their homes due to a very bad family issue at home that they could not get around. And believe me, it wasn't, oh, well, my parents didn't let me stay out past 10 o'clock. <laughs> it was, usually goes a lot deeper than that. So I just want to put the spotlight on something to make us think a little bit more the next time you may see someone sitting on that street corner with a sign. And uh, in this film, you're collaborating with producer uh, Elizabeth Abayon. Yeah. And uh, I know you previously worked together on yeah. uh, Devlin a few years ago. Yeah. And um, Elizabeth, she's been producing films for 30 plus years now, and she knows the industry very well. Uh, so can you share a bit about your collaboration with her and how it's been working with her on a few different projects now? Yeah, well, when I first got Deadline, I was hired on where she was from the start of the script, and I couldn't believe my amazing luck when I was brought on as a producer on that film, and especially to work alongside her. 
I thought I knew a lot being you know, 25 years in the business, but it was a it was almost like having a master class um, in producing and learning a few things I didn't even know. Uh, but during the process of that film, she heard me a lot of the times, you know, talking about Switch Up because we were setting it up to go immediately right after Deadland. And she offered to help me. I, she really is very passionate about helping female filmmakers. And she loved the story. She loved the message it has. So she fully came on board. And I felt beyond blessed and lucky to have her as lead producer on this movie. And looking to the cast in this film, um, obviously, I know casting uh, Christian De La Fuente was very crucial uh, in the role of Ricardo. And I know you had worked together previously as well. Uh, so what were some of those early conversations like in bringing him onto this project? Well, it's funny, the last project that we did together, uh, during that project, we talked about how it'd be great if we could work together again. And if I was, you know, directing and all we had to do was come up with the idea. And on, I swear to you, Thomas, I woke up one morning with the idea. My phone was next to me and I called him and I think he was in Chile <laughs> and he may have been on his uh, treadmill. I said, hey, how do you feel about playing a talk show host that is famous, but then loses everything, falls in love and we also put a spotlight on homelessness and he's like, I love it. Write it. Call me when you wrote it. <laughs> and that was, that was really it. That was the organic, that was the process that of how we put it together. And of course there was quite a few conversations about building out the character and how he really wanted to um, be as authentic as possible. And really, you know, when we changed it to Brownsville, he absolutely loved it. He's like, yes, there, there we can really, you know, really put, you know, I mean, be organic to the situation, not just say, okay, we're here. Or when, if we were shooting in Miami, we would have said it was another location. We really went there. We were on the streets there. The alleyway that you see is really an alleyway where at night there are homeless people there. We employed homeless people in our movie and, and paid them correctly. <laughs> um, and any, I mean, we did a lot of stuff to actually, you know, practice what we preach in the film. And he was fully on board and fully helped with everything because he's also a producer on the film as well. And I know you have a background in entertainment and reporting. Uh, you were with <laughs> CNN for a time. Uh, so did you pull from well, any, did you pull from any of that experience uh, in developing maybe the character of Ricardo and his work as a talk show host? Was that uh, an influence at all? More for the producer, Marie. I right, know okay. what he had to go through uh, watching what my producers had to go through, not with me, but just in general. And the funny, funny little story years ago when I was an entertainment journalist, um, I would, of course, one of my jobs was to go on the set and watch filmmaking happen and report from there. And I remember late close to the when I decided to end my journalism career and go into my producing career, I was on the set of Spy Kids. And I remember everyone sitting, you know, sitting down in their chairs and going, well, this looks easy. I can do this. But I didn't see was Elizabeth running around <laughs> the set like crazy. And fast forward, I think it was about seven or eight months later, I covered her premiere. I interviewed her and I said, what advice would you give to someone who just wants to drop everything and go and produce? And she said, you just go for it. You know, you just and I, I went for it. And of course, when I saw her in Deadland and when I met her face to face and she said, how did you get into this? I said, well, Elizabeth, you told me to go for it. <laughs> so, you know, it, I've noticed a lot of things come full circle, you know, in this business. And also when you're working with people that are, you know, a close team and we were all a very close team. It was a fantastic creative experience. The actors all brought their A games. Honestly, I, I couldn't have asked for more. Yeah, no, speaking more to the actors, um, hand in hand with Ricardo, you have uh, Juliet uh, Restrepo as Cassie. And, uh, you know, she's the one who is a catalyst for a lot of Ricardo's evolution. Um, so when did you find that she was going to be the right actress for this role <laughs> and, uh, you know, would make the best counterweight uh, for the character of Ricardo? She was the last person I casted, actually. Um, and it, it, she was also in Deadland. And uh, she was one of the very early on actresses that Lance Larson, the director of Deadland, casted way before I ever came on the project. So for me, she was not 
she was on my radar. I knew she was going to be on the movie, but I hadn't met her. I hadn't spoke to her like the other actors we later casted. And I'll never forget, I was in my car on the Deadland set. My producers on Switch Up were screaming at me because we were two months from shooting and I had not picked Cassie yet. And I said, guys, just everything you've shown me is not Cassie. It's not her. And I put down the phone. I was just had my head in my hands. And uh, I got a call that said, you know, can you meet Juliet, you know, at the, you know, the COVID check-in table? Could you take her to the hotel? You know, which producers do. And I'll never forget. I saw her get out of the car. She came up to me and she said, hi, I'm Juliet. And I almost want to say, hello, Cassie. <laughs> I mean, it was, that was her. Um, and the, I mean, I pretty much decided on that day, the only thing I need to know is, could she and I get along? Are we creatively on the same page? And we got along like a house on fire. And I think a week before Deadland wrapped, I offered her the role and Elizabeth had already come on board. So Elizabeth knew I was going to do this. And um, even the director of Deadland who had read the script said, that is a brilliant choice star. <laughs> so it just happened, it just happened. I. I held out because I, and I told, I say this to other directors and I'm still working with other directors now to produce as well. And I say, it's, it's a gut feeling when you're, don't cast your lead until you know that that is the lead. It will just come to you. And it really, it came to me because Cassie was so important. I mean, Ricardo is important. You know, the journey is through his eyes, but she is, you're right. She is that catalyst for everything that happens throughout the whole film. And I was, wow, I think we hit the jackpot with Juliet. Yeah, no, I think you really hit the jackpot with the whole cast. Uh, <laughs> you know, one, one more um, one more cast member I want to talk about, uh, Jeff sure. Fahey as yeah. uh, Charlie. And he just has this incredible soulfulness to him. And I think you can see that even. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I know he's, I mean, he's uh, not homeless, but <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that soulfulness he just brings with him wherever he goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, I think he's he's been in a few of Elizabeth's films in the past yeah. as well. Is is that where he came into the picture from? Well, I mean, I was I would have killed to have Jeff Fahey. So right. when Elizabeth said, I'll talk to Jeff, I was like, oh, please, you know, you know, please make that happen. So it was a, it's a very natural decision. I, I didn't want to impose myself on Elizabeth to use one of her contacts. But when she offered it and she said, you know, what do you think about Jeff Fahey? I said, I would kill to have Jeff Fahey because I knew he would bring everything he had to the role and he would deeply understand because I also knew his background of how he helps people in the charity, all the, you know, all the humanitarian work that he does in real life, um, which is awe inspiring. So I knew he was perfect for the role. And uh, this was your feature film directorial debut, and you have a uh, quite an extensive background in uh, documentaries as well. Um, have do you notice in any ways that um, the DNA from your time in documentary um, manifests in how you approach feature narrative filmmaking? Um, a little bit, because most of the documentaries that you see online, each of them were done under incredibly intense deadlines. And sometimes when you're working on a film with a limited budget, like we did have with Switch Up, like we did have with Deadland, it's ingrained in you. Uh, you know, there's a certain sort of filmmaking you have to bring under budget, under deadline, meet everything and make it happen. So that was the perfect training ground. You know, for me, I feel to come into feature films, um, also the producing side of it, producing feature film helped me on the di directorial side, knowing what producers, you know, the limitations that producers have to finish a product and deliver it and then on top of it, sell it. So um, both aspects helped me a great deal. Well, Tara, I really do appreciate your time. Today. Thank you, Tara. Thanks Thanks so for, much. You yeah. got to come down to Texas. I would love to. <laughs> if, yeah, if I'm down Stop there. Stop by 2025. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, congrats on the film, and uh, hopefully we show more conversations in the future. Thank you so much, and your website was awesome. I was really, I was so happy to hear we were doing the interview today, so thank you for sticking it out and uh, having me on board. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Well, hope you have a great day. You too. Take care. <laughs>